infinite complacency, people went to and fro of the earth about their little affairs, serene in the assurance of their dominion over this small, binning fragment of solar driftwood, which by chance or design, man has inherited out of the dark mystery of time and space. Before we get to my talk with Chris, I would like to thank Visit Braxton County, West Virginia. Now this is a very beautiful part of the country with no shortage of indoor and, well, let's face it, especially with the mercury rising, outdoor activities. Choose from one of the area's many lovely hotels and have days filled with eating at the local restaurants, relaxing on Burnsville Lake, fishing the Elk River, And then, when it's time to get weird, you can head to one of its haunted attractions like the Haymond House in Sutton. It is a 120-year-old home that stays very busy with both living visitors and its permanent residents who are not of this plane. One review of the home left after an investigation turned a skeptic into a believer. She said the house was beautiful and very, very haunted. Now that sounds like a guest I need to track down. So, get you and your family out to Braxton County, West Virginia. You can find them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Or, go to the source for all the pertinent info in one place. BraxtonWV.org forward slash Bray. That's B-R-A-X-T-O-N-W-V dot O-R-G forward slash Bray. Thank you so much for reaching out and being willing to share your story. Yeah, I haven't really talked to anyone about it, just like my family members and and a few of my close friends. You know, that's because people, I tell people, if I mention aliens or anything like that, they'd be like, what? Okay, no, I don't believe in aliens. And to tell you the truth, if this never would have happened to me, I think I would have been the same way. We figured out we were on the same time zone, and then... I thought it was a typo in your message, to be honest, because I wrote down Pittsburgh. And I'm like, wait, Pittsburgh, CA. And I look it up, and sure sure enough, there is a Pittsburgh, California. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. I learned something all the time, you see. And that's uh, around San Francisco, right? Yes, it is. It's, it's about, I'll say, about 40 minutes away. So you've been out there your entire life? Yeah, um, I was born in Anchorage, Alaska. And, uh, you know, I was born on Elmerdorf Base. And I moved from there when I was about two and a half or three. So, yes, yeah, pretty much I've been here all my life. That's just like me. Uh, I was military brat and was born on yeah, a military so base in <laughs> England, but I don't remember it because we left and came here when I was so young, right? So, same thing. Because exactly. I was just going to exactly. go, hey, how'd you, how did you get to Alaska? But there you go. When you're a military yeah. kid, that is exactly how you end up in very interesting places that most people wouldn't go, I'm going to move to Anchorage or, hey, I'm going to move to Lake and Heath, England. And you're like, what? <laughs> All right. So, but, yeah. like I said, we are in Pittsburgh, California, and we are going back to when you are 12 years old. And, you know, something that also came up in the message, messenger when you sent to me was that you were actually out riding your bike, which, hey, everybody, back in the day, that's what we did. What those kids are doing in exactly. Stranger Things, we actually did that. It's crazy. Exactly. <laughs> and what's funny is the bike was new. I had just got the bike probably, it, it was, my birthday is August 14th, so I had just got the bike, so it had to be August when this took place. Okay. So, um it was probably, I would say, uh, about two weeks after I had gotten my bike. It's funny because the day was clear, you know, and 
I just wanted to get on my bike and go wherever my mom wanted me to go because so I could ride my bike. And she asked me to go to the store for her. It was around 6.30 in the, you know, p.m. And she asked me, and I was like, okay, mom, yeah, no problem. And she said, hurry back before it gets completely dark because the sun was getting ready to be going down. So the trip would have only taken me about, I'll say around 30 minutes tops because I'm going from, you know, I'm riding my bike from, you know, from my house, which is on Palo Verde. I mean, Quail Court, but it's off Palo Verde. And I went to Rayleigh's. So it, it shouldn't have took me, taken me long at all. It was around 6.30 and I go there. When I go to Rayleigh's, I shop. I I get the items that my mom asked me to get. I put them in a, you know, the, they bag them for me. And I put the bags on my handlebars. And I started riding my bike home. By this time, it's dark. You know, I didn't beat the, you know, sun. So it's kind of dark. And as I'm riding my bike, everything is normal. And it's a beautiful day. Um, should I say night? There's no clouds in the sky. It's just stars. And I get to the hill, Palo Verde. That, you know, it, it's the street that leads all the way to my house. So I, so I get to that hill, and it's a hill going all the way up there. So I get off my bike, and I start walking my bike up the hill because I didn't want to ride my bike up the hill. So something just told me to look up. And I looked up, and I saw these two stars. It was two stars. <laughs> They're moving, but I, when you're walking, you don't know if the stars are moving or if it's just because you're walking because it seemed like they're following you. So I stopped. And when I stopped walking, the star in the back stopped too. And the other one kept going. And I was like, what the heck? And then it just took off really fast and caught back up to the same feed that it was going. And then, you know, that kind of spooked me out. So I kind of jumped on my bike. And when I jumped on my bike, I just tried to ride it all the way home, which I did. So I looked up and the damn things were gone. They were totally gone. So. I get to my court, Quail Court, and there's a cop car parked in front of my house. And I'm like, what the heck? And so then I ride my bike past the cop car, and the cop stops me who was sitting in the car. And he said, he asked, he asked me, are you Chris? And I said, yeah, what's going on? He, so he just tells me to go in the house. And there's another cop in the house talking to my mom. I come through the door, and my mom, she sees me. She goes, boy, where have you been? And the cop is like, you know, the cop is like looking at her, looking at me, and she slaps me. <laughs> she slaps me in the, right, right in my face. And, she, you know, she's angry, and the cop didn't even do anything about that. He just says, oh, my job is done. So he walks away. My mom, she asks me, where have I been? And I said, mom, I tried to tell her about what I just saw in the sky. She didn't want to hear nothing about no stars or nothing like that. So she goes, do you know what time it is, Chris? You know, and I was like, ma'am, you know, and she was like, do you know what time it is? It is 12.15 at night. Where have you been? So it turns out the cops drove around the whole neighborhood looking for me. They even went to Rayleigh's and they went to the bathroom and everything, couldn't find me. And they came back and they were talking to my mom. And they said that they couldn't put out uh, missing persons because they had to be like, uh, a certain amount of time or something like that. And my mom was just really freaked out. She didn't know where I was. She she claimed she drove around the neighborhood looking for me. She went to Rayleigh's herself. I'm like, what are you talking about? I went straight there and back. And I did not know it, the time loss, you know. I mean, to me, I went there and back. So there was like five hours missing or five and a half hours. I was like, what the hell, you know. And I didn't know as a kid. I still didn't get it. I didn't get it till I got older, to be honest with you. But a couple of weeks later, my mom saw a bump on my back, on the right side of my back. And what's funny is I um, had my girlfriend take a picture of the same bump, which is still there today. And it's not a bump anymore, of course. It's a hole now. And it's a little hole that goes down my back. You can totally see it. You know, if you zoom in on the picture, it's, it's so small. But if you zoom in, it's a hole. It's a complete hole in my back. And anyway, long story short, um, my mom tried to pop it and couldn't pop it. And she she said, oh, it, it must be a mole or something because it had a little black head on it. It looked like a mole. 
So she said, um, she told me that if you pop a mole, it would bleed to death or something, or it'd just bleed and it won't stop. So she told me as, as a kid when I was like 12, because this, she, she saw a bump on my back like maybe like five days later after the whole entire incident. So when she couldn't pop it, she just said that it was a mole. And time passed. I got married one time when I was 21 and, you know, it didn't work out. And I got married again. And I had kids and everything. And my second wife, she she saw the same bump on my back, and she started like screwing around with it because it, you know, every now and then I would just reach back and feel the bump because it, it it just you know something that that was there. And she started popping it, and I told her, oh, don't pop that. My mom tried to pop that when I was a kid. That's the mold. Don't you know? She so she stopped me. She goes, nope, there's something coming out of it, Chris. And she just kept squeezing. I said, what do you mean? And then she started asking me questions like, have you been around metal or something? I said, no, I didn't even take metal shots. So this little metal object came out of my back. And it was like this, like it was shiny. It was the same color as like aluminum foil. But it had a tip on one end and it was flat on the other end. So I tried to poke myself with it and it, and it wouldn't poke me. It, like it wouldn't puncture my finger. It just bent. When I saw it bend, I like kind of did two fingers and, and it, it rolled up like toilet paper. The This piece of metal, it rolled up. And when you let go of it, it went right back into shape, you know, and to the shape that it wasn't. So, you know, me and my ex-wife, we played with it for like, I'll say about three or four minutes. And then the damn thing disappeared. It just disappeared. We had no idea where it went. We looked for it everywhere. She couldn't find it. I couldn't find it. It just disappeared. So, you know, and after it disappeared, we kind of freaked out. We were like, what is that? And I already had told my ex-wife about what happened to me when I was a kid. And to me, that just really gave me, you know, the, <laughs> it just really woke me up. And I was like, I was abducted. What the hell? Because I found that thing in my back and my mom saw it like, because it wasn't on my back at all. You know, and my mom saw it maybe three or four days after the incident, and she tried to pop it, and it wouldn't pop. It wouldn't pop out, you know, so she kind of like, oh, it's a mole. And then when my ex-wife saw it, she popped it, and that little metal thing came out. So I don't know what to say. I really don't know what to say. But I do know that after that, as an adult, I used to have dreams, reoccurring dreams that, that I had. It was the same dream. And I had a dream that, I was in like a foxhole with like me and it was like four other people and we would try and get out, but we couldn't get out of it. But if you look up, it was like a big, you know, it was just like the sky, but it was UFOs everywhere doing, just flying around, doing it, doing tricks. It was kind of, kind of cool. But, you know, and then I wake up, it's like the same dream I had. I haven't had that dream in about, I'll say a couple, like a couple of years now. But I, I used to have it all the time. I tell you right now, if that would have never happened to me, I would never, ever, ever believe in no aliens or nothing like that. But now, since that's happened to me, that's all I do is look up in the sky. And me and my girlfriend, you know, she she claims she's seen things too. And what's funny is, well, that's like, you know, she just bought me a telescope <laughs> for my for my birthday. And, I you know, I haven't even used it yet, you know, but. It's that's all I do, and it's not a day that goes by that that doesn't cross my mind about what happened to me. And I even, um, me, my girlfriend and I, we even went to a hypnotist <laughs> and get this one. She, um, she even recorded it, my girlfriend did, and I didn't think I can go under at all. I didn't think that the hypnotist would even be able to put me to sleep. I was such a skeptic, but she actually put me to sleep, <laughs> and I did not know what I was saying now until I woke up and saw the tape. And, you know, I guess the hypnotist said that something did happen to me, but it won't, you know, whatever my inner something won't let it come out because it won't let me relive it. And she told me that um, she wants to work with me and not charge me. And I was like, no, I'm good. Because I saw that this movie called the, um, I forget the name of the movie, but this lady was, she got hypnot she got hypnotized or, or something. And, you know, and to relive what happened to her and she, it just, I know it was a movie, but, you know, 
I just didn't really want to face what happened to me, I guess. But now the older I get, I do want to know what happened to me. You know, I really do. And, you know, because something happened to me for five hours. I was gone for five hours and didn't, you know, to me, I went there and back. I didn't go nowhere else. I went to the store and back. But when I got home, my mom said I was gone for five and a half hours or five hours, whatever, because I left that for 630. I do remember that time. And, you know, and to, and to get back around 1215 in the morning, it's kind of, you know, like, I don't know. And I rack my mind to try and remember, but I can't remember nothing. That's really what, why, why I'm here now. I mean, it feels good to be able to talk to someone about it. But at the same time, I'm still not knowing what happened to me. And I want, I really want to know. I really, I would love to get, like, go to a, a, like, another hypnotist and them really get to the bottom of it because something happened to me and I want to know. Like, I feel violated, you know? Like, I feel like, like, some took me and did something to me for the, for that much time and put me back to exactly where I was. Because, I mean, right, I mean, I feel like right when I looked up and stopped, that thing, that star stopped. Maybe it dropped me off right there. I don't know. I see. I don't know. I, like I'm just baffled of how I could have been taken without even knowing, and because I to me I went there and back, and it's just I I don't know, Shannon. I'm just just real to this day. I'm 52 now, and I'm still having crazy thoughts about this, and it, it's weird. And I don't know if it's ever going to change because not until I get to the bottom of it, not until I find out what happened to me. Wow, Chris. Yeah, no, I would say no wonder you look up at this guy all the time now. Five and a half hours and gone is not, that. that's a huge deal. And your poor mom, yeah. she must be yeah. freaking out that whole time. Yes, and to the day she died, because she passed away in 2012, mm. to the day she died, she still told me that, I was somewhere at my friend's house or something. Mm. He still didn't believe that what happened to me happened to me. Did she ever let you uh, finish the story about the stars and all of that? Or was that just hogwash to her? I'm sorry. Can you repeat that? Well, did you ever? Well, maybe I should rephrase the question. When you tried to tell her initially about the stars, did she let you get through mm -hmm. the whole thing? Or she was like, oh, give mm -hmm. me a break. Like, that's just no, crazy. No, she don't believe in aliens. No, she, you know. I was raised a Christian, right? And my mom, you know, and, you know, it don't say anything in the Bible about, you know, like preachers don't teach you about aliens. So my mom, she's one of those people that feels where it, this is it. <laughs> like, this is all God made, you know, this is it. You know, he didn't make no aliens or nothing like that. So I don't think she believes in aliens at all. My dad, on the other hand, he does. He believes in aliens. You know, he said he's seen stuff being in the army and being stationed in Alaska on the air force base that was born on, he said he's, they saw things that they couldn't even talk about. So, yeah. Mm. Yeah. So I know for a fact that they exist because of what happened to me for them to put something in my back and, you know, for me to find it <laughs> and then it disappeared. Like it was in my back for all those years. So why, you know, why was it okay then? And then it comes out my back and it, you know, I, I, I play with it for about five minutes, like three or four minutes and then it disappears. And we don't have stuff like that on earth that can, I mean, it was clearly metal, you know, to me, it looked like metal and it, and it, it, it had no blood on it when it came out my back at all. And I tried to poke myself with it. It would not poke my finger. So I was like, okay, how, how did this even get in my back? Cause it, it, it's soft. And then it would roll up like toilet paper. And when you, as soon as you let go of it, it went right back to the shape it was in. And my girl, you know, my ex-wife, she was handing it to me. It disappeared. We so, couldn't find it. So no she more. goes to hand it to you and she has it like pinched in between her, her yeah, fingers or something. Exactly. And then she exactly. goes to drop it and it's just, it's just not there yeah, to drop into your not, hand. It's not there. Ugh. And we looked for it everywhere. And it was so shiny that if it would have fell on the ground, we would have seen it. So it was nowhere. We, we, it just lost. And to this day, if, if you talk to her about what happened, she would tell you the exact story that I told you about how it came out my back because, you know, she, she's the one that, that took it out, out my back. 
And she would tell you the same exact story. We don't know what it was. Did she have to <laughs> uh, it pinch it with her fingers or did she? Yeah, she was using her fingers. She was squeezing my back. And she said a tip. She, she said the black thing came off, whatever, the thing that looked like a mole, that popped off. And then a little, she, she said she kept squeezing and then the little tip of it started coming out. And she said, and, and that's what she was telling me. No, Chris, you know, there's something metal coming out of your back. And she was asking me questions like, have I been around metal or anything? And that's when I responded, no, I never even took metal shop in school. Now, so, which end came out first, the the tip that was angled or the flat part? I'm, I, I'm not sure about that. Uh, you know, I'm not even sure about that. Yeah. But all I know is she, she you know, because she, she was behind me and she was popping it. She was pressing my back. But the hole is still there. So this day, how big is the hole? My mom, it's small, but because my girlfriend took a picture of it, it looks like a small little bump. You know, it, it it looks black, but you can actually see inside the hole. You know, if you zoom in, it looks like it, it's a fine, it's a fine. It's, it's I, I mean, it's crazy. Well, that's crazy that it, it just disappeared. It's, it's like it just m- melted, or it or, disappeared. Uh, it evaporated. It just was gone. We couldn't find it nowhere. You know. Um, we, I mean, we looked everywhere, everywhere for it, you know, and she couldn't find it. I couldn't find it. And we tripped out about it. I mean, to this day, if, if her and I talk, if we talk about it, we freak out because, you know, I mean, she gets goosebumps. I get goosebumps because it happened because it really happened. And I mean, to this day, I'm telling you, if, if that never would have happened to me and if someone would have told me <clears throat> what told me what I'm saying right now, I would have looked at them like they're crazy. I probably would have been like, yeah, bro, that was an awesome dream. <laughs> or, yeah, I saw that movie. You know what I mean? <laughs> right, or, or, right. Or, or, some, or some smart remark. But I, but I can't deny it because it happened to me. And Have you ever heard, um, I, I believe that I'm speaking right when I say this, but I think Whitley Strieber had something that where it was doesn't matter, but he pulled it out. It, and it actually could, like if you held your cell phone or, you know, anything with a receiver, like a radio, it would do that weird, mm-hmm. you know, feedback noise as if it had a transmitter or something in it. It's just too bad that that thing disappeared so quickly because it would be interesting to see how it would react around something, you know, anything else, really. Let me tell you something. If I had that thing today, oh, my God, I'll I'll. I'll probably still be playing with it <laughs> and showing everybody. Look, check this out. Check this out. Yeah, Look, you're like, you think I'm full of it? Back. How about this? Yeah. <laughs> check, check this, this thing out. My back, bro. Yeah. Like, but wasn't it was wasn't that the same thing from the the Roswell crash, quote unquote metal stuff? Like they could, you know, move you know crumple what? it up and it would pop let back me, into Let me tell you something. When I saw that, I I, I didn't know nothing about that until I saw it because I love those shows. Me and my girlfriend was just watching those shows and um, the one for Roswell, and they showed that metal on there. I mean, of course, it wasn't the real thing, right? But they showed it doing it, and when it did it, and they described it, I said, me and her looked at each other. We said, that's the same thing that came on my back, and we were like, what the hell, you know? But yeah, I'm just glad that you had somebody else there to so to I'm, witness that, you know, and to to touch well, she, it. Yeah, she's the one that took it out. Yeah, so she took it out. And told me that, because I'm telling you, I tried to stop her from popping it because I thought it was a mole. And my mom was like, oh, if you pop a mole, it'll bleed to death. So I was like, you know, I mean, it was it's stupid. I, I'm sure it's stupid now, but but I, I totally believe that. <laughs> we, You know, if you pop a mole, it might bleed. What about and, any other physical symptoms, ailments, anything weird okay. at all? Well, I don't know if, okay, no, I wouldn't say physical, but. Like my girlfriend and I, you know, I mean, it's gonna sound weird, but okay, like she, okay, she can randomly put out some kind of like math, like a math equation or something, and you know, and she don't know the answer to or something, and I just close my eyes and I, I mean, I don't know if this is from what that or or, or if I could just do this period anyway, but I can come up with the answer. And when she's on the calculator, it takes her, you know, a little, like a few seconds. And she comes up with the answer. She goes, how did you do that? And, you know, and I said, I don't know. <laughs> I well, have no what, idea. What, what kind of equations? 
I mean, could we could oh, we try no. that now? No, heck no, because you know it's it, it's like random, you know. I mean, I, 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 but it's but it's like random stuff. Like, okay. like she'll be like trying to figure something out, and and oh. she'll say, "God, well," I, and then I just like think about it real fast, and I just say, "Okay, that," and she goes, "Okay, that's weird." I, I, I said, "I don't know how I did it." Maybe I guess, and I guess right. I don't know. Right. But it's like I see the answer. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it, it's kind of weird. That's, that's cool. That would have come in handy uh, yeah. for me in school. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. But but that's just something that happens every now and then. That, that it, it happened a few times. A- anything else weird or interesting like that? No, not really. Your whole dream thing. Let's touch on that a little bit here, right? So... Mm-hmm. You're in the foxhole. You have at least four other human beings around yeah. you. They're they're definitely people, yeah. right? You look up. Yeah. You, it's there just sky. There's UFOs everywhere. Do you you never yeah. ever ever see any beings? It's always just these four people. No, I've never seen no aliens or 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 nothing like that. You know, but what I do see is like just it's, it's like UFOs just doing tricks like in the air and just going by and just like stopping going by and just like going really fast just colors different colors is it just but lights that, or is it craft okay like, no no it's craft it's ufos you know and because they you know they come close to the fox hole they come really close like you know you can actually see stuff and then they just take off and then you know it, it, it's just are and they me and, saucer shaped they're like different shapes there's like round ones like ones that shape like like a saucer there's there's some that shape like orbs and they're just like everywhere they're they're everywhere and but and we're trying to get out me and it's like a like a guy it's like it's weird because the same dream and it's usually the same people like i kind of could see their face but i know if i do know it's one lady in there her and i were trying like clam out and just keep sliding down like we were not able to clam out of anything and then like as soon as we try, we'd slide right down, and we couldn't jump or nothing. It, it was kind of weird. Are you, ca- are you guys scared? Up, no, I'm not scared. No, I I wasn't afraid at all, not one bit. And that's the whole thing, you know. I wasn't scared at all. I don't think they were scared, but you know, we were just trying to get out the hole, and and we just didn't know where we were. It was interesting that you hypothesized about that one stopping you know about the timing of that and maybe why it actually stopped yeah i well, mean that's because i've been thinking about it for all these years yeah <laughs> how how far away were those you know quote-unquote stars were these ufos okay they weren't way up there with, with the stars they weren't way up there like way way up there but right. it was just two stars they were simultaneously moving at the same time real slow but they were moving and I didn't know if they were moving because I was walking. So I stopped walking just to make sure. Because, I mean, if you're outside and you're walking down the street and you're looking up at the stars, the stars look like they're moving, you know? So I stopped just to make sure it wasn't just me thinking the stars are moving. <laughs> so when I stopped, you know, the star in, in the front kept moving, but the star in the back stopped with me. And it just took off real fast to catch up like right where it was at the time it was behind the star and it just kept going slow chris what about you know because sometimes when we're actually on talking about this stuff it can jog memories sometimes what about any weird uh like sometimes when there's quote unquote abduction scenarios and and things are going on outside that might even equate to missing time then sometimes people report that things are going on in their home, like a poltergeist activity or any any weird, like or what you would consider shadow people experiences or anything nah. like that. Okay, now that's a whole different topic right there. Okay, yeah, I mean, I, <laughs> wow. Okay, this house that I'm standing in right now, okay, something did happen, but I don't know what it was. I do music, okay? I play music. You know, I do, I play keyboard, I sing a little bit and I rap and I, but I play keyboard and my keyboard was hooked up. It's always hooked up, of course, but it, you know, this is one night I look up and my keyboard was on, but it wouldn't make, but it couldn't reflect 
what I saw on the ceiling. And it was random, weird, kind of, it wasn't numbers like I seen before, but it was, I don't know if it was numbers, but it was some kind of thing on the ceiling, lit up on the ceiling. And this wasn't a dream because I was awake. And it was like randomly, and I, you know, and then it just disappeared. And I jumped up, turned on my light, and I looked on the keyboard to see what, if that reflected what I saw on the ceiling was coming from my keyboard. And it, it, there's no way it could have been because it was nothing reflecting like that. The lights were on on my keyboard. However, it, 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 well, it didn't glow enough to reflect on the ceiling and to be shown the, the, those, those numbers were changing. It was like something was, cha- I, I, you know, I, I can't explain it. It was like numbers were changing, but not numbers. It was like some kind of uh, hyperglyphics or something mm. were on my ceiling doing different things. Okay. And when I saw that, it freaked me out. So I jumped up, turned on my light, and I didn't see nothing else, of course, because it, it just disappeared off, you know, the ceiling. But so that happened. And I did have another incident in the same house. And I don't know if it's just because I think this house is kind of haunted, maybe. But I was laying in bed and I was laying on my back and I remember like something. <laughs> okay, it felt like something sat on my bed, okay? but it didn't because I, you know, and I'm not sleeping either. I, I'm awake now. So when I felt the pressure on my back, I mean, on my bed, I looked over and I didn't see nothing, of course. But when I put my hand to the spot where I felt the pressure, it felt like something grabbed my arm. And and it wouldn't let go. And I told my girlfriend about this. And it wouldn't let go. And I was, like, trying to, like, pull and pull. And the more I pulled, it just seemed like it was draining me. Like something was draining my my energy. So then I just, like, let go. You know, I mean, I kind of, like, just, like, relaxed my arm. And then it let go of my arm. And that was it. <laughs> so stuff like that. And that's happened, like, a couple times here at this house that I'm living in now. Yeah, but I don't know if that's just the house is haunted or what. I don't right. know. <laughs> How I long? I don't know if that has anything to do with aliens or anything. And right. I've lived here for for around seven years now. Well, what about your girlfriend? Does she have any weird experiences in the home? She well, yeah. She just like the other day, something just tapped the door, and she opens the door, and she looks around. She, you know, like the door, she couldn't see. She goes, "Chris, something just knocked on the door." I said, yeah, I heard that too. And, you know, and so I, I don't know if the house is just haunted or what, you know, and certain things like disappear, like she, um, like she'll put stuff down and it's just like, you know, I know I put it here and I, and that's happened to me too. Like I'll put my keys somewhere where I know I just put them and I'll get up to go get them and they're gone. There's somewhere like where I know I wouldn't have had left my keys. You know, it's like, I know I would have never put my keys here. So what the hell? So, yes, yeah, stuff like that, like under a hat or something. Okay, I would never put my keys under a hat. That's what I was going to ask, because sometimes you okay. hear where things will go missing, and then they'll pop back up in the strangest place that you would never yeah. put them. Exactly. Stuff like that happens in this house a lot. Hmm. And again, I like you said, I'm not trying to blame it on the poor aliens because I don't know yeah. that we don't know it's that it has anything to do with them. But we do hear things like that sometimes where people feel like they're connected. Right. So and that numbers thing is kind of a strange, random incident, huh? Like it's cycling through not quite yes. the English version of numbers. But when I do it, it gives me a hell of a headache. I tell you that. Oh. <laughs> Okay, and and check this out. Okay, now how you said connected. Okay, that's a weird. What you just okay? I I do have a feeling that okay, and this is gonna sound weird, like I am connected to something out there. I do have that feeling. That's why I keep looking up in the sky all the time. Like I feel like something's gonna happen. Like something's about to happen. And it's funny because when I kind of think hard about seeing something in the sky, I see something in the sky. Like I see something like um, like something that looks like an airplane and it's so high in the air and it, then it just stops and then it just like fades out, goes away. And my girlfriend and I, we see that all the time, all the time. 
And you can do that um, pretty much at will. Like if you went out every night and really tried to do that. Yeah. Th- yes. I, mm. I will see something. Yes. I, her and I will see something. That's why she, she bought me the freaking telescope. <laughs> I don't even know how to, <laughs> I, I don't know how to really use it yet. But they're, they're yeah. not easy. Yeah. No, um, no they're not. A program like CE5 to you is probably kind of interesting then because those folks, you know, that's their whole thing is they say they can kind of call them to them. You know, they can interact with them at will, basically. Okay, now see, I I don't know if I can enter like with them personally, but I know when I think hard and I want like it's a clear night and I'm looking for, if I'm looking for it, I do see stuff and it's kind of weird. and. I mean, I know the difference between an airplane and a helicopter because, you you know, you can hear airplanes. Okay. The thing that I heard, I mean, the thing that I seen that night when I was 12 had absolutely no sound. And from the distance it was, you know, it was, uh, like I said, it wasn't far like a, a star, like all the way, so far away. But it was like a, a high airplane, like a high a high jet would be, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You know, and and I, but you can hear a jet, you can hear a helicopter. These had no sound at all, absolutely no sound. So I knew it wasn't a helicopter. And then when it stopped, you know, I, I mean, being 12, I don't really know what we have these days, but I know, you know, it scared me because when it stopped and it just took back off real fast and like caught back up to where it was before that kind of freaked me out that's when i got my bike and ran and, and just rode it home real fast and then i look up and then they're gone i was like okay what did i just see and then i you know i couldn't wait to get home and tell my mom about this you know and then i get home and the cop car and they tell me i'm like you know my mom tells me it's 12 15 in the morning i'm like what you're no, like what? Wait, hold wait, wait, wait. on a second here well what's funny is i still didn't like put two and two together i still didn't do that because you know like i said i was only 12 and i didn't really know about a a damn alien or not like that do you you remember what it was that was your first introduction to something like this like the missing time and the alien and the craft whole thing tying together what was your introduction to that what do you mean my introduction when i realized it Uh, yeah like when you realized oh those were ufos and i had missing time well okay that's uh, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, when, that's probably when my, when she took that thing out of my back. Oh, not, in, not really, so not until then. I, yes, not that's because I mean because all the other stuff was just okay. The yeah. time, I didn't really think about it too much, you know. Right. And and, and you know I mean I knew something. I knew I seen something that night, you know. And I knew when I got home. My mom was mad at me because she she said I was gone for a long time and she couldn't find me and this and that. I knew that, <clears throat> but I, but I still didn't put abduction to it. Yeah. I still didn't put that to it at all. Not until that thing came out my back when I knew my mom saw that bump on my back, the same exact bump which I have on my back now, and it's not a bump anymore. But you can still feel it, but it's not a bump. It's just a hole now, you know. But when I, I mean, I knew I didn't have that before. I knew that wasn't on my back because it kind of, it was irritating me, you know? And that's when my mom, because mom, I said, mom, this bump is, is, is freaking itching me because I think it was itching or something. And my mom said, come here, let me look at it. And she was the kind of mom that, you know, she would see a bump and try and pop it, you know? that that That's what she was. So she tried to pop it and it wouldn't pop. And she just said it was a mole because I guess it looked like a mole. So... She said it was a mole, so she said, just leave it alone, you know, and for years, I just forgot about it, you know, but each and, like, every now and then, it would, like, like kind of itch, so I would, like, kind of, like, rub it or something like that, and then the older I got, like I said, I got married once, and I got married again, and then my second wife saw the same exact bump, and when she started squeezing it, she, she said, you know, it looked like it like it, it should be popped that's that's what she said and she started just squeezing on it and the head of it the black part that looked like a mole came off and then that's when the silver thing started coming out she said it's, it's a metal it's and almost I was like what do you mean metal? It, it's almost like the the black part that's supposed to look like a mole was placed there for that mm-hmm. very reason to look like a mole that, 
that's what I'm thinking. Exactly, because that just came off. You know, it's like she was squeezing it, and I guess her fingernail scraped it, and it just popped off. And it, and it didn't bleed. That's the whole thing. It wasn't bleeding. And and when she squeezed that thing out, it didn't have any blood on it or anything. That's super it weird, dude. It was shiny. That's it was pretty so, cool. It's just a bummer. It's gone. But where the hell did it go? That's what we want to know. Oh That's God. what we you know. Her and I, to this day, yeah. you know, if we talk, you know. In fact, we just talked about it like last week. It was like the, the same thing. It was like, God, man. I'm sure if that thing still existed, I probably would have got on TV because of that. <laughs> it would have been a big deal, especially the tandem with the missing time. Yeah. Your mother actually calling yeah. the police because you were gone for yeah. so long. I think that's a very uh, important part of the story, you know, is that the cop yeah. was actually at your house because you were gone that long. What, yeah, Chris, what, ab- what about your dad? What did what does he say about your, your encounter here? Well, okay, I didn't meet my dad until I was 28, okay? Um, he wasn't in my life at all. You know, when I moved, my mom and him got divorced when I was like three. So, you know, when I moved from Alaska, when I was two and, you know, she went back there and divorced him and everything came back. But so my dad really didn't say anything, you know, cause I didn't know him. But when I told him about it, he actually said, okay, they took you to the mothership and they chipped you. That's what he said. I even made songs about what happened to me. I have songs that were about, I have a couple of songs I made. I have a couple of rap songs about it and I'm singing a song about it. And it's crazy because it happened to me and it's like, I can't deny it. You know, it really happened to me. Like to even think about it, it's like, what, like, why, like, why me? Like, like, why did you pick me? <laughs> like, why did you come get me? Out of all the people you could have got, why me? Like, why was I so special? <laughs> because now, to this day, I'm tormented because of it. Because I want to know what happened to me. Like, what happened to the time? Where where in the hell was I? Did y'all take me in your ship? Did we go to your planet? Did I go away that far and come back? And why can't I remember anything? And, like, why was it just a, like a trip to the story to me? Staring back. And it's five hours missing. Five and a half hours missing. Where was I? And it's just, it, it freaks me out every time I think about it. What you said about, you know, the dream and everything. I mean, mm-hmm. the fact that you went to a hypnotist and, you know, they're like, oh, yeah, there's definitely stuff in there, but we have to dig a little deeper. Yeah. So they obviously, you know, for assuming that's the situation is there were alien beings and they took you, but they have uh, wiped your memory, at least on the surface. But they either... A, they messed up, or B, they just can't do this all the way. But they're allowing you to have these recurring dreams, which could be nothing, right? That could have nothing to do with it. It could just be your mind is putting that in there because that's what we're thinking this is. But will you, in fact, find either another hypnotist or go back to that same one? And did that hypnotist... Did you tell them anything at all? Any details? Or was that I just... Didn't tell them anything. Nothing. Okay. Oh, I know. I remember, well, the hemorrhages, she tried to get me back to where I was, to the point of where I was coming from the store. I, you know, and I was actually, it was working. I was actually where she said I was. And, but when it happened, I start, in the video, I start crying. <laughs> I was crying. I was like, what the hell am I crying for? And she kind of woke me up. She just, after I started crying, she woke me up. Now why did and she do that? Did, did you tell her that you didn't want to go past a certain I point? The, I guess I was in the rest, she said, and mm. she didn't want to see me. I, I don't know why. I, I don't know. But I kind of got upset because I wanted to know what happened to me. You know, I was like, well, why? That, that's what I asked her. Why'd you wake me up then? Because I want to know. She, and then she started saying, you're in her conscious or something she was saying i can't remember the exact word she said but she said it wouldn't allow me to relive it she said she want to do it again free because she said this is this is really interesting and she wants to really dig it out and find out what happened to me and she said she won't charge me are you going to go back to her uh, no i'm not i i'm not going to go back to her but i do want to go back to a different one because you know someone who's done it that type of right of, because She's never done it before. And 
I'm thinking she gave up too fast and she didn't really do it right or something. Well, I don't know. It I just, don't know. It, she made the choice for you. You know, she woke you up and yeah. he, it seems like you were about to go there and she's like, oh, no, 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 time to wake up, Chris. Yeah. Here you go. You're fine. Yeah. La, la, la. And you're like, no, yeah. I was there. You right, have video right. of this, yeah. huh? Yeah, yeah. I have video of it. And, uh. see, and I didn't really, I mean, think she could do it. <laughs> like, I still don't. I mean, she put me asleep. So I don't know. You know, I mean, I still didn't think that I was able to be put under, you know, because I was the biggest skeptic of the whole thing. But you you but she, would I mean, like to know. I mean, yes, I want every to bit of it. You want to know. I want to know every bit of it by a real hypnotist, by uh, by someone who's done that type of of, you know, like trying to find the truth about abduction. Yes, I want to, yeah, I would love well, to Well, maybe we can really put out the call to action on this episode then. If anybody would like to get in touch with Chris, please get in touch with me, Shannon, at IntoTheFrayRadio.com, and then maybe we can get that set up. Some, Like Chris says, somebody that has experience with with folks who have stories like this. Yes. Well, Chris, uh, any that. anything else that I, I forgot to ask you or that we should bring up before I let you go? No, that's pretty much it, Shannon. And I really appreciate you having me on your podcast. It's awesome. And I'm glad I was able to tell my story. This is my story. My name is Christopher George. This happened when I was four years old. My abduction.
divided on us. They will say, no, we don't believe literally in reincarnation. That after your funeral, you know, you will suddenly become somebody different, living somewhere else. They will say, reincarnation means this, that if you, sitting here now, are really convinced that you're the same person who walked in at the door half an hour ago, you're being reincarnated. If you are liberated, you will understand that you're not. The past doesn't exist. The future doesn't exist. There is only the present. That's the only real you that there is. The Zen master Dogen put it this way. He said, Spring does not become the summer. First there is summer, and then there is spring. Straight, 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 straight. 